In this lecture, we're going to talk about sessions and session management. I'll give you some basic ideas on how and why we need sessions and how they work. Uh, this is CSC 3100 Web Programming, Spring 2017. Now we use applications all the time that have for one several users. Uh, we can have, you know, in, in websites that you use, um, you can have several hundred users trying to access them at any given time. Uh, when we use these applications, we know that we want to be able to have a personalized experience. We want to be able to log in and then have the application know from whatever actions that we do um, that it is indeed us making those, those requests. Uh, we don't want to have to log in every single time we switch pages, for instance. So, you know, from the perspective of a user, uh, you know, we want to have um, a session where I do a number of interactions with the site, uh, with the application, um, and I want to be able to, um, you know, perhaps have these sessions bridge across these sittings. So I might, you know, go to the computer do a number of, of uh, operations or a number of interactions with this web application. I might get up, go eat lunch, get up, go leave for a day even, um, come back, uh, and, and maybe I want to resume my session. Or, um, or maybe um, I don't want to, and so I get logged out automatically, or, or maybe I, I um, explicitly log out. Um, and so my session should end, and then when I start up again, um, you know, perhaps the things that I did before aren't remembered, or if they are, I want some way of managing the state of the application um, through uh, through the way that um, the the site or the application manages my data. So we need sessions for a number of different reasons. Um, one of them, uh, one of the reasons, uh, one of the main reasons that we need to do something or have a framework that supports sessions is that the underlying protocol used to uh, manage interactions between clients and servers is HTTP. So you see this actually all the time when you go to a web browser and you, you type HTTP and then you put a URL in there. Um, that is a message that is being sent from the client to the server. In that case, uh, with a browser, that's typically a GET request. Uh, there are several other kinds of requests that can be made. Um, they, there can be a, uh, the use of the POST protocol, PUT, PASH, DELETE. All of these are part of what is called the REST protocol or the, re uh, uh, or the REST style of interaction between, um, architectural interaction between um, components. Now HTTP is a stateless protocol. And what this means is that every message that gets sent um, is is essentially um, different from any other requests, or no, I'll, actually, I should say, no different than any other requests. They uh, they're um, they're independent. There's um, you know we we have uh, uh, for instance just no way from the message itself or from the um, there, we have no way from uh, from the protocol to be able to de discern uh, who has made the request, who the user is, without doing something special. And that's where, um, that's where these, these sessions and session management comes into play. So without some kind of mechanism to determine the identity of who the clients are, the servers would have to continually ask who the user is. Um, and that would certainly make for inefficient programs as well as a, a poor experience for the user. So managing user state can be difficult with have, without having some kind of way of, of storing user-specific data. Uh, and so this is where sessions come into play. Sessions are this, is this mechanism for storing user information. Uh, and, and it's used to help with, um, with managing state um, and doing quick retrieval so that um, the application, uh, sorry, the client can identify itself as uh, various requests are made, uh, and then the the server side can determine who the user is based on uh, based on those requests. 
uh, and based based on you know little bits of information. When session uh, sessions end, this session information is discarded, um, and then uh, uh, and so then the next time the user wants to access the site, they have to uh, re-identify themselves, and and then you know the the uh, the session mechanism kicks in again. So um, one place that we see uh, and that you see regularly uh, the the states of unauthenticated session or or experienced sessions is is when you authenticate with the system. So you start off when you get to a system in an anonymous state and then you log in. And what happens is that uh, uh, a session ID is generated by uh, by a site. Uh, and, and then that is sent back as a cookie to the to the client, uh, and then that session ID is essentially used uh, within the um, within the applications to be able to indicate to the uh, uh, to a server uh, who is making a specific request. Um, so in the case of an authenticated session, um, you go through an authenticating state, um, and then you're authenticated, and then at some point, you might log out, but this session ID is be, this session ID becomes a really important piece of managing this whole model, so that when you are in the authenticated state, you essentially can do all the things that are necessary to uh, to interact with the application, while at the same time identifying who the user is, so that uh, the uh, the server doesn't have to reauthenticate. The server doesn't have to try to figure out well who is this user. This this session ID becomes the mechanism um, by which uh, this uh, uh, the system is, is able to tell who you are. So a big piece of this is uh, the use of web cookies uh, or a cookie. And you've heard the term before, I'm sure. Um, for instance. Uh, when you, you're on a site um, and um, you want to make sure that, uh, that your information isn't being tracked long term, maybe you, sh maybe you clear your cookies. Or, um, you know, one of the ways that a, a lot of websites are able to tell who you are um, and maybe even do this anonymously is through the use of these cookies. I think a really example of cookies happens with advertising. So you might go to one site. Um, and view a product, and then you go to another site, maybe it's a news site, and then you start seeing advertisements for that product. That's, that occurs through the use of these cookies. So I overheard my mother-in-law once ask, because I, I think she was having an error with uh, uh, browsing some site, and, uh, and I think that the, the help page maybe said something like, well, you have to clear your cookies, and she's like, what? What in the world is a cookie? How do I get rid of my cookies? I didn't even know I had them. Um, and so basically a cookie is a, uh, is a piece of information. It's, it's data that's sent from a web application or a server um, or, or just a website. Uh, and it's sent to and stored in a, a client browser. Um, and then this, this cookie is essentially accessed at various times to be able to determine on the client side, determine uh, things like user preferences, and 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 then in our case, it would be used to help manage a session. So, um, how do sessions work? Uh, first of all, there is a structure, a data structure that's used, uh, and this is sort of a sim uh, a simple example of a a session structure. Um, so, you could have something like a user ID, uh, username, a number of other things. Um, that are stored um, as part of your session, so that identifies who you are, uh, what your name is, a user ID, uh, and then there is this uh, the, the session ID um, that's uh, essentially a short-lived ID that um, is stored on a server, uh, so that when uh, when you access a site and you provide your session ID, um, the site then knows who you are. What your what your name is and, and whatnot, whatever is being stored um, as part of the uh, the session information. Now this information it, you know goes away after um, the uh, after a user 
um, you know, perhaps quits out of an application and you clear out your cookies, then uh, when you visit the application again um, and you provide a, provide a session ID, um, that information no longer is stored by the server and so you might have to re-authenticate or do some other things. Now you'll notice at times when you visit websites um, that uh, your identity is known still and maybe you didn't have to authenticate again to access the site. It's because these cookies and these session IDs have persisted across invocations of the application. Now, um, the mechanism for how um, these sessions work is shown here in this picture. So, the client makes an HTTP request, and you know they have, they they get some session ID or some you know which is essentially the, a cookie that uh, uh, the uh, uh, the server responds with uh, on first invocation. But you know maybe this is something that you know after you had accessed the the site as, site several times, the session ID has now been stored on, on your computer, and so you make subsequent requests with this. So. What the, uh, what the server then does after they receive this request, they will look in a server data store for that session ID. The session ID would be akin to some type of, of uh, identifier like I showed here on this screen. So this uh, session ID then is used to identify who the user is. Maybe there's the username, user ID. Uh, which then is used within the code of the application to do things like maybe access the database to get at some user data. Uh, the other thing that could happen is with this user ID, we can start to personalize a web page uh, and personalize the view that, uh, that the user gets. Maybe they've, they've got some preferences on how the, uh, how the page appears. So, um, the, the page can be rendered and then finally the server would send you know, that information back to the client in terms of a response uh, and then it re it'll refresh that session ID, make sure that the session ID is the same. If it isn't, then the client might do something like say, well, hey, this wasn't actually uh, meant for me. Maybe there's something going on here. Um, and, and actually, in some cases, when you do things like uh, make a request, but then clear your cookies, and then try to make subsequent requests. You you get this this uh, behavior that you know maybe you have to log back in, or you lose your session, or you lose some information that was part of your session. Uh, but anyway, this is how this is the basics of how all of this works. Um, you know, from the the perspective of the client. You know, once I've established what my session ID is, um, the server essentially just uses that session ID to. Uh, to do things like figure out who you are, um, to to use that to access your database and whatnot. Um, imagine what would happen if we didn't have this session ID, and I needed to do things like access the database. Um, well, we would have to re-authenticate, um, right, in order to do this. So I'd have to authenticate and say, okay, who am I? Uh, and that would be a really awkward kind of interaction without having some kind of way of managing these sessions. Because, you know, after you authenticate, how are you going to how are you going to interact with the system again and have it remember your state or remember your identity or where you are in the application? Because you'd have to authenticate, and then you'd have to, well, do whatever the next operation is. But how does it? Know, how would the application know who you are after authenticating? Uh, because remember, this HTTP request uh, and the HTTP protocol is stateless, um, and and really, then you know this is kind of the genius of the session management is that uh, through the use of the cookies, through the use of uh, the session IDs, we can figure out who the user is uh, uh, and continue to do things like you know have these long-lived sessions. Um, where the user doesn't have to re-authenticate and you can provide then a personalized uh, a personalized experience for the user. So from a from a, a more global perspective, um, because the server does have to manage several users, um, each one of the users would have their own session ID that is established through uh, maybe through authentication or even just through first contact with a site, being able to 
throw a cookie over to the client um, saying this is what your session ID is and then all the subsequent interactions that you have with the site then through those cookies uh, would give you at least some way of having a personalized experience. Uh, one of the things if you don't need to authenticate a person but still want to provide that personalized uh, uh, experience uh, you can still use session IDs and you can still use these uh, uh, these cookies to help you sort out who a particular user is uh, uh, through all of the different uh, uh, accesses they are going to make uh, through you know again passing the cookie back and forth um, so you wouldn't necessarily know, need to know who someone is but still anonymously you could still be providing a personalized experience um, that uh, allows you to save some kind of state between uh, the different accesses that uh, that the user has. So going back to uh, this diagram here, um, I might not necessarily have to be authenticating someone, but I might have certain states that the user goes through, and I could use then the session ID to, to really keep track of where they are within the model of interaction with the site without actually having to authenticate, but still using the cookies and using session management to help you sort those, uh, those states out. So anyway, that is, that's the basics of, of what happens here in uh, actually in, in a great many of web platforms, uh, be it uh, PHP uh, uh, or ASP.NET or, or Ruby on Rails, um, just a way of being able to to cleanly manage uh, the state of a user through the use of session management. So anyway, that concludes this lecture.